Fear has been used throughout history to manipulate humans and exert control. John Adams said that fear is the foundation of most governments. Edmund Burke said that in the 18th century, no passion so effectually robs the mind of all its power of acting and reasoning as fear. Fear fuels a desire to be controlled, as when people are scared, afraid or in fear, psychologically they want someone to take control, which makes society susceptible to trusting authoritative types to take power. It helps authoritative powers to take and keep control, usually by creating a narrative around fear. It also helps authorities to convince people of the need to act, making them extensions of power and control. Fear has been used in many ways to control and can become dangerous, especially if the fear does not actually exist. This is because when a human is fearful, they are less rational and they do not think reasonably. It has been a factor that has helped authoritarian rulers rise, enact strict and overreaching social policy, and keep society in line. Ancient Egyptians and other civilizations used fear of barbarians, of invaders and outsiders to help maintain power and control over civilization. The government was portrayed as an authority that would protect civilians. The rise of Hitler could be attributed solely to the way that he and the Nazis used fear, convincing a desire for Germans to have a powerful and strong leader to take control of the threat of the Jewish person, who through propaganda and lies convinced people that Hitler was a saviour who would deliver them from the evils and the ruthless money-obsessed Jews. He also blamed them for Germany's loss in World War I and the aftermath that followed, such as the Treaty of Versailles. When in power, he used fear in his regime to control the people. It's the reason that many Germans justified their own actions during this period. Communist leaders gained control in many countries throughout the 19th century by using a kind of fear psychosis. They convinced peoples that they had the means to and the abilities to keep a people safe. They do this by creating a narrative around the oppressed and the oppressors, teaching the oppressed classes to see the oppressors as evil, cunning and greedy and undeserving of their wealth or status. Propaganda taught the people to be afraid of the cunning, the rich and the powerful oppressor class. This narrative then wins people over to engage in class warfare against the capitalist bourgeoisie. This fear of the capitalists and the privileged monarchy gave rise to Lenin's populism and power in Russia in the early 20th century. Communists in China under Mao used a similar tactic once in power, teaching a fear of the landlords and the privileged classes. In first coming to power, Mao used the fear of the Japanese imperialism to fuel support for them, appealing to people's sense of fear against the looming takeover of China. The communist red shirts made themselves look to be the ones dealing with this impending threat, more capable than the government of China at the time. As a result, the average person warmed to their ideas and welcomed their rule. These oppressive governments held on to their power by invoking fear constantly. As a result, many humans did atrocious things in the name of these governments, an extension of the authoritarian power. Those who can make you believe absurdities can make you commit atrocities.